court button, so the floor is now yours, sir. Great, thanks, Reggie. Uh, really excited to uh, to be here and have an opportunity to um, tell everyone a little bit more about uh, about Wicket, the world's first member data platform. Just very quickly, I'm Jeff Horn. I'm the co-founder and CEO here at Wicket. So, I'm going to walk you through a bit of an introduction uh, to the concept of a member data platform through some slides, and then we'll actually jump into the platform and walk through uh, a little bit uh, of a demonstration. Uh, for everyone to see the member data platform in action. So with Wicket, you know, we really feel we're reinventing how associations can manage their membership data and also engage with their members. And we're doing it just by simply bringing a fresh and modern approach to the concept of uh, member data management to the association sector. We're pretty intentional actually not to describe ourselves as association management software. Uh, and that's because we really are quite different um, from uh, you know, from the traditional systems that exist today. So, you know, why? So why, why build a member data platform and, and bring this new concept to the association sector? Really, at the end of the day, we, we just saw as we looked across the industry that associations were facing a lot of the same challenges when it came to leveraging software applications for managing their membership data. The first problem and, and probably the most fundamental one is that um, it's really hard for one software um, to do everything and to do everything really well. So the, the traditional association management software systems are, are full of modules and those modules look to try to cover most of the functions um, of an association. But in reality, it's very difficult for one software system to meet all of your unique needs as an association. The reality is you're going to need to use other software tools to get the job done and to most effectively uh, interact with your members and to give your staff the best tools. One of the other big issues we were seeing is data silos. And this is just a fundamental problem. And this isn't specific to the association sector. This is just every organization faces challenges with this. It's not easy to integrate your data with other systems. And as a result of that, as you start to go and use other, whether it's software as a service or other custom solutions, you end up with your data spread across many systems. And that just makes for incredible inefficiencies, but also makes it really hard to understand your membership and, and really trust your data at the end of the day. The other fundamental issue we're seeing is just the challenges around integration. Historically, it's been challenging to integrate your AMS or your CRM, whatever your system of record is, with the other software tools in the ecosystem. It might be very expensive to do so. It might just be fraught with issues. So in looking at the sector, we, we saw these problems and we said to ourselves, there really has to be a better way for associations to think about managing their membership data just by leveraging more modern approaches to software overall. And it was through that the idea of the member data platform was born. So I'll talk through at a high level, just kind of what a member data platform is and the things that it's really built to do very, very well. And I think that's the key here is not trying to do everything, you know, instead just staying really focused on doing a few things, doing those things very, very well. So I'll talk through these five kind of key points that a member data platform looks to bring uh, to you as an association. So first and foremost, we absolutely want to be that source of truth for your membership data. So in a lot of ways, a member data platform feels like a CRM system. It's built to store all the people, all the organizations, your groups, um, who has membership and who doesn't. All the, all the information about your members, your stakeholders, all of your contacts, those all are going to be stored in the member data platform. And it's really going to be the system of truth for that data. But we want to, instead of trying to bring all the other functionality into our product, instead we want to connect that rich membership data with all of the other software systems in your ecosystem. So in the member data platform model, we want you using other software tools. We want you to go use the best website content management system, the best email marketing platform, the best learning management system. Use best in class software or best in need software for your organization. What Wicket does is it breaks down those data silos. It lets data flow in and out of those other software tools from your core member data so you can continue to trust it um, as you move through the, the member lifecycle. Something very unique to the member data platform is the idea of recording member touch points. 
So this is the concept really of taking events and activities happening across all of those other software tools you're using and recording them back in Wicked. What this does is it allows you to still see a single view of all of the things happening across your membership when looking at a member record while still being empowered to use those best in class tools for event management or learning management or your online community, whatever those may be. So Wicked becomes a really strong place to understand and what's happening with your membership at any given time. The other thing the member data platform looks to do is we definitely want to enable you to collect your dues and renewals. But like most things, this isn't something we're trying to do directly within our platform. We want you using great e-commerce software or great membership billing software, which would typically take the form of subscription billing platforms. So what we're seeing emerge is these two fundamental ways. E-commerce is a great solution if you really want that unified shopping cart experience where you can sell all kinds of different publications, courses, along with your membership or subscriptions and donations. So the unified shopping cart, and this is really what e-commerce platforms are built to do. And this is really where we see the industry going. Subscription billing platforms are another just really strong option. If you're really looking to fully automate the dues collection process, these systems are built for that. Store the credit card information of your member and then just let the software do its job every year by automatically processing those membership dues. So these two different options, Wicked is able to integrate with these systems and provide really strong solutions for enabling the collection of your dues. Lastly, at a high level, we really want to unify your member experience. We do this, the number one way we do this is through a single sign-on engine. So the member data platform comes with an SSO component that basically allows your members to just have one username and password. Once Wicked authenticates that user, let's say from your website, logs them back into your website, once logged in, now they can jump into any of the other software tools in your ecosystem without having to log in again, without needing another username and password. So maybe they're going to jump out to your online community, jump into your learning management system. They wouldn't have to log in again. The single sign-on utility just takes that over. It makes for a very seamless and much more unified member experience. So I'm just going to I'm going to stop there and we're going to jump out of that kind of high level intro um, of Wicked and the idea of a member data platform. And let's actually jump into the software itself and, and see some of this uh, in action. So just bear with me while I swap out some screens. So welcome to Wicket. This is uh, the administrative interface for Wicket. So this is where you as staff at an association uh, will come in and manage your membership data. Wicket primarily is a back office tool. Think a lot like a CRM in terms of the way, you know, at its core, the way it operates. Wicket is really built to store people and organizations, record touch points, um, and allow you to manage all your different committees and working groups. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to jump into Wicket here. And of course, we don't have time to go through the entire product and look at all of the details. But what we will do is we'll, we'll kind of look at a, an individual person. Um, we're going to use a, a record, uh, Fiona Mack, as our test subject here today. And we're going to look at Fiona's record look at the type of information that we're storing about Fiona, and then actually jump into some other software tools and see how that data is shared between different software tools um, when it's connected in with Wicked. At a high level, um, so Wicked, of course, is delivered um, cloud-based. It's, it's delivered as software as a service. What that means is there is no customization. Every single customer is running on the same version of Wicked. Um, and that is powerful. And that just means you're always, you're always on the same upgrade path. You just get updates as they are released, like you'd expect with SaaS software. So you really don't have to worry about infrastructure, customization. The product is just built to have a very high level level of configuration um, instead of customization. Also, the product is built just to be incredibly easy to use. We have, a, we have a, an immense focus on user experience design. And really what we're trying to do is enable your staff to be able to jump in and use the tool with minimal training. And that's the feedback we get from our customers. 
So what we'll do to start our journey here, I'm just going to look up, uh, we're going to just do a quick search here for Fiona Mack, who is our test user. Now we've got about 30, almost 30,000 contact records here in Wicked and in this instance and about 19,000 organizations. So we're just going to quickly jump and we'll, we'll take a look at Fiona's record here in Wicked and just talk through some of the information um, that we're storing about Fiona. So when we jump into Fiona's profile, the first thing we're gonna see is we have just a standard set of profile data that we're storing on Fiona. In this case, it's just a small set of kind of core profile fields. Wicked actually has about a dozen core profile fields that can be turned on or off uh, for any customer. This is a pretty small snapshot of those. So we have this kind of base set of what we'd consider a core profile for a person. And then we have all the contact information. So again, a lot of it feel like a CRM, just storing you know, as many addresses as we want on Fiona's record, as many email addresses as we want, phone numbers and web addresses. So that kind of makes up what we'd consider a core profile for a person in Wicket. And for organization records, very similar concept in terms of a core profile. Now we can also um, see that in this case, under active memberships on the right side, we can see that Fiona actually has an active membership as well, but it was actually assigned to her through an assigning organization. So in this case, uh, Fiona works at a company called Mac and Associates, and that, that company actually has membership and is stored in Wicket. So what I'll do is I'll just jump into the membership tab here on the left. And here we can see the details of that. We can see that Fiona is considered a member through this group membership that was purchased through this assigning organization, Mac and Associates. And we can see the, the her membership is considered active. Um, and that's because you know, the, the active state of this organization's membership is up to date. If I jump over to Mac and Associates and look here, we can see that if I just back at one step here, we can see that Mac and Associates, this organization has an active membership and we can go in and if I look at the assignments, we can see that Fiona Mac is assigned. We could come in from here and assign more staff members who basically are gonna be able to get membership roles. So basically the key there is just to understand a platform like Wicked, it's built to be able to understand membership on individual people, and it's also built to be able to understand understand membership on companies or organization records. So we work very well with professional associations and societies, trade associations, and what we see quite commonly actually is hybrid organizations that perhaps have both types of memberships. Wicked is also built with a very extensive custom field system built within the platform. What this does is it allows us to configure unique fields that are going to be very specific uh, to your organization. So this is really saying, well, yes, we understand you're going to have that core profile is important data, but we know you're going to want to extend that data with custom fields that are very unique to your organization. And they might be designations, they might be all kinds of different fields that can be configured and stored within the system. And those fields can be stored just for the purpose of being able to manage them here within Wicket's interface, they could be written into Wicket from other software systems, or you might expose some of these fields on your website for a user to self-manage. But really, there's no limit to the amount of data and the extent to which we can extend those core fields of the platform. Relationships are another kind of uh, important way to relate data together um, in Wicked. Relationships um, can connect a person to an organization, such as employment. So you could track the full employment history of a person uh, within the platform. But relationships can also be uh, to another person. So we might, you know, we might store the fact that, um, you know, so Fiona just grab another record here. We could say that you know Fiona is the supervisor of this record and save that as well. So relationships can be person to person or person to organization, really powerful way just to store, again, historical data because of the ability to store start and end dates with those relationships as well. Now, a really important piece of data that we store in Wicked is something called touch points. And this is a pretty unique in that touch points are built to really be pieces of data that can come in from other software systems. So what I'll do is I'll scroll down to the bottom here of Fiona's um, touch point list. I'll actually jump to the next stream. We can see that two days ago, her account was first created in Wicked, and then there was a, a sign-on through the single sign-on engine. 
But if we jump back here, we'll see kind of looking back. So this happened 17 hours ago, which would have been uh, yesterday. She actually signed up for a membership. So there was a membership sign up. Fusebill is a subscription billing software. So in this case, Fusebill was used to sell a membership. And that and Fusebill then wrote back into Wicked and said, hey, you know, Fiona purchased this group membership. Um, the amount was $1,200. And here's a reference out to Fusebill to the billing platform. So that then put in motion a few other things. Some emails were sent out um, and we're using the Canadian Society of Association Executives as our, as our test here. So some emails were sent out from CSAE and that also then triggered through Wicket's integration with MailChimp in this case, it triggered a welcome email from the email marketing platform. So now we can start to get into some automation. So we can see that MailChimp wrote a touch point of a campaign being sent to Fiona from MailChimp welcoming her. Now we can probably assume that within that email, CSA was promoting some of the different resources and tools that they have within their website. So what happened then is we can see that through the CSA website, which runs on the WordPress content management system, we can see that Fiona came in and downloaded a resource called Navigating the COVID Pandemic in the resources and templates section. So the website in that case wrote this touch point into Wicket. And then just to kind of fully demonstrate how touch points can work, we can see that the, an event management platform called Feedloop was used and Fiona registered for an event for the annual conference and then also jumped into the higher logic community and started a discussion about who's planning to attend the conference. So what you can see here is even though that we're using a lot of different software tools to give the most power to the association and the best experience for the users, Wicked becomes this really nice single place where you can see everything that's happening but of course, we could also add a touch point of, you know, just we had a phone call or, you know, perhaps had a meeting as well. So it's also built to store activities that might be more manual. But really, a lot of that power comes from connecting Wicket with other software tools and having that rich touch point data fed back into our platform. Wicket can also store email messages. So as in this case, Fusebill sent out some emails with uh, invoices and things. Those emails were also recorded and put back into Wicket, really just so that we can have a record and we can actually go in and look at the contents of these emails and see exactly what was sent out. So again, it's just about powering you as the staff and association to really kind of understand and see everything that's going on with a membership. So A, you can report off of that, but B, so you can help your member and really understand you know, the experience that they're going through. But if you start thinking about that really rich touch point data that's coming in and you start thinking about, well, wow, what's the type of reporting we can do off that? The sky's really the limit. This is just extremely powerful data that's coming into the platform. So what I want to do now is we'll, we'll continue to use Fiona as our test record. And I just want to show a little bit of the way data can flow from Wicket into other software tools. So we'll take another seven or eight minutes here just to go through a little bit of a journey and then hopefully have you know five minutes or so at the end um, to ask some questions. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at two separate software platforms. And we'll, we'll actually start up here. I'm just going to jump over here to MailChimp. Some of you might be familiar with MailChimp. It's an email marketing platform. It's actually the most widely used in the world. We certainly do see it used quite a bit within the association sector. What we can do with Wicked is we can connect it directly to email marketing platforms like MailChimp or Constant Contact or some of the other ones that are built specifically for the association sector. The goal here is data synchronization. We want your marketing staff to just to be able to come and just use their tools. In this case, their tools are gonna to be the email marketing platform, probably the website, whatever tools they wanna to use to engage with the members. We want them just to be able to focus on those tools and not have to worry about pulling data out of the, the, the AMS or the member platform into those tools. Let's just keep that data synchronized. And that's really the power of Wicked. So we can see here in MailChimp, we have a list here that's been synchronized. So if I jump in, and just we'll take a look here at Fiona's record. Just one second. Gonna reload MailChimp. <laughs> Come on, MailChimp. 
The joys of demonstrations. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't my software. This is MailChimp. Here we go. Almost. Okay. Not the right person, but we'll jump back out. Looks like MailChimp's going to start cooperating. All right, so we'll try to jump into Fiona's record here. Looks like we're going to get back on track. Okay, so we're looking at Fiona's record in MailChimp. We can see that it was actually added via API, and that happened yesterday. What happened was as soon as Fiona's record was created in Wicket, Wicket reached out to MailChimp and created her record, record there. And that all happened through the APIs being connected together. And if we look and if we just edit Fiona's profile here, we can see Email marketing platforms are great at extending them and storing all kinds of data for the purpose of segmentation. So in the case of Fiona, we're storing her full address information up here. So now we could segment by zip code. Um, we're storing all kinds of information. It knows that she is an active member in this group executive membership. So now we can you know, segment within MailChimp by member. So we'll just see that and we can see her address is stored here. So, what, so we're gonna come back to MailChimp in a second. Now, I also want to jump over to a website. So this is CSA's website. Their website happens to run on the WordPress content management system, pretty commonly used within the sector. So the other thing we can do with Wicket, again, is we can tie directly into website content management systems. We're very indifferent to which one you're using. Just use the best one to meet your needs. What Wicket can do is it can tie in very, very, very tightly, and it can do things like you know, integrate our single sign-on engine. So now Fiona, when she comes to the website, she logs in with her credentials, which are stored in Wicket. So this is Wicket's single sign-on engine, logs in, Wicket behind the scenes is validating those credentials and bringing Fiona back to the website now as an authenticated user. So now that Fiona is authenticated here within the website, if she wants to jump out to CSA's higher logic community or their learning management system or their online store, she's not going to have to log in again because the single sign-on engine is going to take that over. But what we'll do is we'll just click on the My Account. So again, this is all within WordPress. We can provide all kinds of different facilities for the member to self-service. And we do this through very tight integration. So as an example here, if Fiona wanted to come in and update her contact information, she could do this directly through the website. So she can come in and manage any of this kind of core profile information. And she could also come in and update any of her address information. So we'll just do a quick change here. We'll say she's... L Street, don't hold me to this being a real address. We'll update the, the zip code. So we'll say Fiona comes in and she just wanted to update that core address information. And so from this perspective, Fiona's done. As far as she knows, she's now successfully updated her primary address um, as stored uh, within the association's record. She could also come in and, you know, maybe she wants to add a, you know, an ad additional phone number that maybe is a, a mobile number or otherwise. So we really want to empower the user and we want the website to really be the core hub where the user can manage this information. And really there's no limits to what data in Wicket could be exposed in a website content management system for the user to self-serve. We really do want it to be, you know, the website as the hub. So if we jump back over to Wicked now, and we'll just take a look, we'll just reload Fiona's record. So as soon as the Fiona made that update, we can see here, if we look at her address, that update was immediately written back into Wicked. So she was on K Street, now she's on L Street, her, her zip code's been updated. So Wicked now has received that update. So now from a reporting standpoint or anything we're doing about Fiona, we have that up-to-date information in Wicked, but Wicked then in turn says, well, what other systems am I connected to where that address should be shared? So in this case, MailChimp is one of those systems. And if we just reload Fiona's record here in MailChimp, Wicket's API will have reached out. And if we just click edit here, we'll see that there she's now on L Street and that zip code has now been updated. So what that means is any segments that exist, let's say in MailChimp, but are perhaps segmenting based on zip code are now gonna automatically be updated and Fiona will just fall into that proper segment. The marketing staff didn't have to go pull an export out of Wicked, bring it into MailChimp and update it. It just happens automatically. And that's really the power of being able to connect other systems directly with your membership data.
So that's kind of the, 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 the flow I was hoping to, uh, to show today, just to see how we can store data in a system like Wicket, have that system, have that data be managed by staff, but also have it be managed by um, your user through a website and how that data can then flow out to the other software tools um, in your overall ecosystem. So, so Reggie, I'll stop there. Um, and uh, from there, maybe what we can do is just see if, uh, if any questions have come in, I'd be happy to uh, happy to answer them. Looking in the Q and A, and I don't see any questions. So, folks, if you have any questions for Jeff, feel free to pop them into the Q and A panel. And if not, I'll I'll certainly have a couple of questions for Jeff. Up, oh, there's one come in. So question from Julie Muller, Jeff, what's the pricing like? It would be, it would be on top of your current software pro providers, correct? Yeah, that's exactly right. So our model certainly is that we want associations, you know, using good software. So we find Wicked is a great fit if you as an organization are already starting to embrace other software tools. You've got an LMS, you've maybe got an online community, you've got a great website content management system and email marketing system. Wicked can come in and really be that glue that holds it all together. From a licensing standpoint, we have what we call a, a base license fee, um, which starts at 12,000 um, annually, so $1,000 a month. And then on top of that, we had a per integration fee. Um, and, and the rough simple math is $1,000 per integration per year. You know, So we commonly see customers licensed in kind of the 15 to 25K annually range um, to give you a bit of an idea of, of where we typically fall. Um, that base license fee, uh, base platform fee does, um, it, it has uh, layers based on the number of contacts we're gonna store though. Does this software tie into things like QuickBooks? Yeah, it absolutely can. And that's really, you know, the beauty of the approach that we have with Wicket, um, not to get into technical details, but the software is built with what's called an API first software architecture. So the entire platform is built as an API and we've got a strong webhook system as well. What that means is the answer to can you integrate with fill in the blank is always yes. It's always yes, as long as that system on the other end and QuickBooks is a great example. If we're talking QuickBooks online specifically, great integration capabilities, great API endpoints that we can that we can connect to. All right. Does Wicked provide recommendations and intros to other vendors or apps, or is that on the association to do that themselves? We absolutely do. So we, you know, we have a unique uh, position in that we we work with a ton of vendors and we, we're constantly building integrations with with platforms that are serving the association ecosystem. So we often will make recommendations when we're looking at an association's requirements. We'll make some introductions and require and you know introductions. Um, and you know, we have uh, I saw another question came in of you know, do we certify integrators? Well, we don't have a certification process today, but we certainly have a lot of preferred vendors that we work with. Um, and have really great relationships with. And for us, the core of this model is flexibility, right? We don't want to say you have to use, if you're going to use Wiki, you have to use this other vendor. We want you to have options, right? We want you to, because we want you to use the tools that are best for you, not the tools that are just best for us from an integration standpoint. So, so one thing I got to find out is who the anonymous attendee is, because they've been asking good questions over the last couple, couple of days. <laughs> Their question this time is, do you need an AMS or what e-commerce system do you recommend? Yeah, so you don't need an AMS in this model. We're starting to, we are, you know, we are seeing scenarios where Wicked is being stood up beside AMS systems, just to make it easier to have your data flow from the AMS to Wicked and then out to other software tools. So that is a, a scenario we're seeing evolve, but no, you don't. Like we have see a lot of customers that are moving off of the AMS model onto Wicked. From an e-commerce standpoint, um, there's a few we see. So if we're talking about specifically subscription billing, uh, FuseBill, FuseBill.com is one that we partner with a lot. And then on the e-commerce side, we see the Magentos, WooCommerce, Shopify, of course, as kind of the, the ones that we probably see the most for sure. All right. I see you integrate with two types of CMSs. Is there an option to build a custom API integration into something like Craft 3.0? 
100%. I love that. I love that. Um, that's that's a really innovative for sure. Yeah. So again, our so our API is open, right? And so as I, when I mentioned that there's a per integration fee uh, with our license, that's for integrations that we are managing on your behalf, right? Which is a large part of what we do. But if you have your own development staff and stuff, our API is open and they can build an unlimited number of integrations against uh, our API. And there's no cost to that. That's just kind of part of our software delivery. So we, yeah, we welcome uh, opportunities like that. All right, last question, or second to the last question. How do you report on touch points to measure things like engagement or display usage back to the administrative users? Yeah, great question. So, so as part of implementation of Wicket, there's kind of two paths we see. We see paths where customers might be leveraging um, a BI platform, such as association analytics, um, where we're going to be a feeder of data into their BI platform, into their data warehouse, and they're going to provide that kind of engagement score. And so we're another data source feeding into that system. We see other scenarios where customers don't have the need for the full data warehouse and those types of BI capabilities. What we'll do is we'll actually deploy a BI software solution along with Wicket as part of our solution. And then a data analyst on our team will work with you to build out and say, well, what you know, what questions are you trying to answer from the data and we'll help to build out those reports. Cool. All right, my friend, I don't see any more questions there. Thank you for a, a very informative and, and insightful demo. And we'll see you down the road a bit, okay? Awesome, great. Thanks everybody. Thanks for taking All right. part. Thank you, Jeff. So folks, we're gonna release Jeff from his duties and start to prepare